Good day, Knicks Nation. So it's the post draft analysis um, for the Knicks. Um, I think we had a very good night last night. I, don't, I know everybody's not going to be happy, but with you know millions of Knicks Nation, of course, everybody's not going to be happy. I think if we won a championship, everybody wouldn't be happy. So can't please everybody. But um, I'm very happy with what happened last night. Uh, I did, as you know, want Devin Vassell. I thought he was the best prospect for us. He ended up going to the Spurs, and I think he's going to do very well under Greg Popovich. But I also remember telling you that if um, Isaac Okoro was chosen by Cleveland, Obi Toppin was going to be a Nick, and that's exactly what happened. So Obi Toppin fell to the Knicks. I like the fact that uh, there were rumors all day yesterday and even before that that the Knicks were trying to trade up and that Cleveland was holding out for more. I don't know if it's true, but what ended up happening was the Knicks didn't do anything and they just waited. And the reason I think they waited was because even before Isaac Okoro was chosen by Cleveland, as I said, the Knicks, like any other team with any kind of sense, they would have a group of uh, several players on their list. And I think they had Obi Toppin at one, Devin Vassell at two, Isaac Okoro at three. And so if Cleveland had chosen Obi, they would just cross that off and go to the next guy and they list. From the reaction of, um, of, of Leon Rose in the, in the war room, he, he was happy that they got, I think that was the, as I thought, that was the guy they were targeting. Now, um, Obi Toppin, I like the interview after. Very important because he wants to be a great player and he wants Tom Thibodeau to push him to become a great player. And we see that he has athleticism off the charts offensively and probably a guy like him never had to worry about defense a lot of these guys on the top level of basketball in high school and college they don't have to worry about defense it's not a priority it's what they do offensively that becomes the priority so some of them never just never work on it and it's not pushed by any coach because whoever is coaching them is winning without them doing that he realizes he needs defense he realizes he's coming to Tom Thibodeau's system. I think we got a good one. We got a really good one here. He's a shooter, stretch four. We don't need to go into the market and get a stretch four now. That's all. We don't need Christian Wood. We don't need Bertans. We don't need Jeremy Grant. We don't need Gallinari. That's all. We got Obi Toppin. He starts at the four. And then uh, on the second pick, I had not done anything on quickly. I had looked at some video and I never had the chance to do the video, but I am very happy we got Emmanuel quickly. Quick release, shoots the ball, good on board defender, needs a little work on uh, team defense, needs a little work uh, on finishing, but I'm not worried about his finishing. He got a nice floater. Um, he's going to be in the nine man, both of these guys are going to be in the nine-man rotation for the New York Knicks. That's my prediction. Because I said, as we looked at Thibodeau, he plays nine guys. Um, and I think both of these guys, I think Ob Obi Toppin will start, will play a lot of minutes. And, and again, I said, this is the only rookie in the whole class that would start under Thibodeau. I said, they might be an exception with Halliburton, but nobody else was going to start. Whoever they drafted was going to come off the bench. But Obi Toppin is going to start at the four. We now have a four. For the next seven years. Okay. Four years of his rookie deal and three years of an extension. We got a four for the next seven years. He's going to be a 20 point scorer. He's going to have to learn on defense. And that's, I'm sure, even this morning, Thibodeau's been in touch with him to talk to him about getting together and working out on their defense. So I'm not worried about that. Very happy with the pick. Um, and Emmanuel Quigley plays good defense. Emmanuel Quigley got a floater. Emmanuel Quigley, a, a dead eye shooter coming off the bench in that nine-man rotation. So what it looks like to me is we got um, our young guys. We kept our youth, okay, and we added two more young guys. Obi is actually older than everybody else on the Knicks as far as the core youth that we have. He's older than all of them, okay? And and so I, I know he's going to come in and play right away. Now, um, you know, we didn't get Desmond Bain. He ended up going to the Grizzlies. Grizzlies had a good night. Detroit had a really good night last night. Us uh, and so did the Dallas Mavericks. They ended up getting Terrell Terry, and then Malachi Flynn. To me, uh, went to a, a team in Toronto that really was the perfect fit for him. Really was. If he came to the Knicks, um, you know, he it would. I love it, but honestly, he's an heir apparent to either 
Fred Van Fleet or Kyle Lowry. If Fred Van Fleet leaves in free agency, he could step in and play. If Kyle Lowry is fading out because he's going to be in his mid 30s, this kid could step in and play. And so, uh, I think, Tor- um, Toronto did good last night as well. So, um, I'm happy. The Knicks did well. We should rejoice. We got a couple of good players out of Drift. We knew we were going to get two good players, and we did. We thought maybe we would get three, but I like that they chose two because that means they're saving the minutes for the guys we got. Okay. We got guys that got to play that hasn't been developed yet. Okay. And they're going to play them. We're going to probably now go for a shooter in free agency. That shooter might be a Fred Van Fleet. It might not. It might be a Bogdanovich because he's back on the market. It could be, I don't know, but there's going to be another wing shooter. I think they're going to sign over the weekend. Um, they may sign a veteran point guard. They may sign a veteran point guard. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a trade made for Julius Randle. If there's not a trade made for Julius Randle, that means Julius Randle has agreed to come off the bench. He's not starting. He's not starting. Obi Toppin is starting. Okay. Uh, so Julius Randle, if he's not traded by the weekend or early next week, um, then, you know, he's agreed to come off the bench, period. Okay. And that would probably affect Taj Gibson because if they're trading Julius Randle, they need Taj Gibson to exercise his option. If they are not trading Julius Randle, they don't need Taj Gibson because Julius Randle becomes a backup four and five. Okay. And, um, and then we will probably keep Bullock. I'm pretty sure we're going to keep Reggie Bullock. Uh, definitely everybody else will be let go with the exception of Taj Gibson. And again, that depends on what's going to happen with Julius Randle. We only need both of those guys. Okay. Next, um, if they exercise Taj Gibson and, and Bullock only using like 14, less than 14 million of their cap space, um, we still got cap space. We still got cap space. We doing, we doing very well, brethren. We're doing very well. So, um, I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do this weekend, who they're going to sign. Uh, Joe Harris is still out there. I mean, he's technically not signed with anybody. Neither has Bogdanovich. Neither has Malik Beasley. And so, yeah, um, we're in good position, brethren. We're in very good position. I'm very happy with what happened last night. I'm looking forward to the season. Tom Thibodeau is really going to whip these guys. We're going to be playing some defense. We got now, at this point, as of today, Reggie Bullock is a shooter. Obi Toppin is a shooter. Emmanuel Quickly is a shooter. Iggy Brass Vegas is a shooter. We got four shooters right now. Okay. And if they get one over the weekend, that'll be five. And I think we're good. Remember now, this year, I'm looking for 35 wins. Okay. 35 wins. That's what we're doing. If we can get 35 wins this year, that's 14 more wins we got last year. Okay. That's a big jump right there. So I think we could do that with what we have. Okay, with the team we got, with the development staff we got, with the kids we got, and the veterans we got. Because right now, um, really, all of our kids are veterans. I mean, like I said, Frank's been here four years. Kevin's been here three years. Mitch has been here three years. RJ, well, he's not a veteran yet, but he's been in his second year. Okay, a DSJ is here four years. So we got these kids are now, they're young, but they're veterans. They're young veterans. Then you got Reggie Bullock, maybe Taj Gibson, and whoever they're going to sign this weekend. We'll see. That's going to be a veteran for sure. And we'll see. So, brethren, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. I'm very happy. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to see who we sign this weekend. Uh, I was shocked at some things. I was surprised Patrick Williams went at four. I was surprised he went at four. I thought he would go to Detroit and even that would have been a surprise. But I was surprised he went at four. Good for him. I was shocked Tyrese Halliburton fell all the way to 12. I was shocked that the Suns took Jalen Smith and did not take Kyra Lewis. I was shocked at those things, but that's their business. Our business is the Knicks. We got what we need. Time for us to move on. Have a good day. Now, t- um, today we're going to dis- officially see who the Knicks will let go. Uh, today, by certainly by 5 o'clock today, we'll know who they're letting go. We're going to officially see what's going to happen with Gordon Haywood because the, the, they extended the deadline for him to decide to exercise his option. Something's going to happen there. I still think something's going to happen. I was targeting Atlanta for that, but let's see what happens. And then, um, what else? Um, so yeah, we're going to see what happens with our guys. We're going to see what happens with Gordon Hayward. We're going to see what happens with Julius Randle. I thought he'd be gone by this morning, but apparently not. 
Um, so we're going to see what happens with, with that also. Like I said, if they keep Julius Randle, he has agreed to come off the bench. And I have no problem with that. If Julius Randle says, I'll come off the bench, I have no problem. Now he's playing the second unit. Okay? He's playing the second unit. And, and, and Julius Randle will be good against second units. I don't, I, I don't like him being a starter in the focal point of an offense. That's my problem with it. Okay? Um, but Obi Toppin just opening night starter at the four. Definitely. There's no question about that. They can't waste time with this kid. Put him in there. Let's get it going. All right? Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, again, I'm very happy with Emmanuel quickly. I'm very happy with, with Obi Toppin. Um, even though, like I said, I wanted De- Devin Vassell, but I told you I wasn't going to cry if they took Obi Toppin. He's, he's going to be very good. We got the guy that's probably, I think Obi Toppin is probably in the top three running for rookie of the year, first team all rookie. Um, because he, yeah, definitely. We got a 20 point score. He's going to bring us 20 and six. He's not a big rebounder. I can see 20 and six, just like Amari Stoudemire. I can see 20, 22 points a game, maybe six to eight rebounds a game. Um, I can see that. And he's going to be a better passer, though. Obi sees the floor better than Amari did. So, um, yeah, this is going to be pretty good, man. Uh, I'm very psyched about this. Knicks Nation, we moving forward. Shalom.